Wouldn't it be great to have all of the energy you want all day long? Unfortunately, fatigue often gets in the way, even for everyday activities, and it seems to get worse every year. Here's why. When you're 20, your body has a natural ability to maintain healthy circulation, but every year that you age, your ability decreases. So what can you do to increase that natural circulation and fight fatigue? Drink Super Beats. Super Beats promotes the body's own natural ability to produce healthier circulation, resulting in increased energy and stamina all day long. Just mix a teaspoon into a few ounces of water with your choice of mild berry or black cherry flavor, and you can erase fatigue, increase your own natural energy. Call 800-664-5617 or go to danasbeats.com. And with your first order, get another 30-day supply of Super Beats free, plus indicator strips to see how Super Beats is working for you. And free shipping. Call 800-664-5617 or go to danasbeats.com today. Nate Chilman here in Boise, Idaho. Filling in for Dana here on the Dana Show while she is at the NRA convention. Welcome. Another week. We made it. We made it through another week. The sky didn't fall. The world actually isn't on fire. The market's up as I speak. And in fact, not only not only is I'm not I'm not saying everything is sunshine and lollipops and whatever, but it's not awful. In fact, it's pretty damn good. All of the drama that we've been watching for the past couple days, this country is greater than. We are greater than. We, unlike others, are not solely defined by our government. We're defined by us. That's what makes all the other stuff kind of alluring. Because it's not affecting us so far. And it's driving certain people nuts. Nuts. I'm not saying you shouldn't be bothered by unrest. You shouldn't be bothered by extracurricular activities. Who said what? Who meant what? Did somebody misspeak? Did somebody spread falsehoods? It bothers me too. Maybe maybe some of us have that friend who loves telling loves telling tall tales. All right, I, I know as guys, if you if you spent any time in the locker room, you probably have a couple couple guys in the locker. If you don't, you're probably the one uh, that that would that would tell about all their conquests, uh, for lack of a better term, big fish stories. And you know everything they're saying. Well, maybe not everything. 99% of what they're saying is BS. But you know what? They're entertaining in the way they pitch it to you. They they tell a great story. So you listen. You're all in. It's not gospel, but you're entertained. Other people choose to get bothered by it. I know people out there, and you've seen instances of people out there who, if... If not everything is going their way, they are thrown off. If they can't control everything, they're thrown off. Cavuto on Fox went on a epic rant for Fox. Epic rant. Let's hear a little bit of that epic rant on his take on Trump. President Trump is fond of calling out the media on fake news, but is he the one giving them very real ammunition? Maybe not intentionally. I'll even give you the benefit of the doubt, Mr. President, and say maybe not deliberately, but consistently, way too consistently. So let me be clear, Mr. President, how can you drain the swamp if you're the one who keeps mudding the waters? You didn't know about that $130,000 payment to a porn star until you did. Said you knew nothing about how your former lawyer, Michael Cohen, handled this until acknowledging today you were the guy behind the retainer payment that took care of this. You insist that money from the campaign or campaign contributions played no role in this transaction. Of that, you're sure. Thing is, not even 24 hours ago, sir, you couldn't recall any of this, and you seem very sure. Now, I'm not saying you're a liar, you're president, you're busy. I'm just having a devil of a time figuring out which news is fake. Let's just say your own words on lots of stuff give me, shall I say, lots of pause. Like the time you said the Russians didn't interfere in the 2016 election until a lot of Republicans had to remind you they did. Came back months later and you said, 
Well, I never said that Russia didn't meddle in the election when, in fact, you had a lot. Now, none of this makes me a never-Trumper, just always confused. Like when you claim your tax plan was the biggest in U.S. history, when it wasn't, or that the bill you signed to make it all happen would cost you a fortune when it turns out it is going to help make you a bigger fortune, or that your job approval numbers really aren't that bad uh, relative to other presidents at this stage, when they're actually worse than most presidents at this stage. That can change, but what's weird is this pattern does not. Like the time that you said rumors of Rex Tillerson's departure at the State Department were false until they weren't, or that your former chief of staff, Reince Priebus, wasn't going anywhere until he was, or your economic advisor, Gary Cohn, was doing a great job until he wasn't, when you absolutely loved Steve Bannon until you didn't, swore by Jeff Sessions until you started swearing at Jeff Sessions, had your legal team locked in place until it wasn't, denied reports you were ever thinking about firing Robert Mueller, even as you now threaten getting involved at the Justice Department. Now, none of this makes you evil, but I'm sure you can understand why even your friends say these inconsistencies don't make you look good. Yet, we're making it. I actually share some of Cavuto's frustration. The thing is, understand the beauty, and I don't know if it's accidental or purposeful, the beauty of this administration is the realization of more and more Americans that we do not have to depend on Washington, D.C. for our success. In fact, the more and more Washington, D.C. pulls themselves out of our life, we do pretty darn good. We do great. And that bothers a lot of people in D.C. That bothers a lot of the decision makers. Everybody wants to have a hand in how things go. Heck, who doesn't want to be important? Everybody wants to be important. People want to take credit, which is something President Trump likes to do. The unemployment rate, the U.S. jobless rate has fallen below 4%, the lowest level since December 2000, the lowest, lowest level since December of 2000, according to the Labor Department today, one of the lowest levels of the post-World War II era. And people can't handle that good news. No, 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 that's bad. If, if, it, if it falls too low, if jobless numbers fall too low, then it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. This is bad. You can't tell people that when they have a job. You can't say the country is bad to people who have money in their pocket and a job. I don't know if everything is because of Trump. I don't. This is happening at a time when he's president. I don't know if he's the cause of it or if he just happens to be sitting there while all of this is going on. Then here's the thing. I don't care. I don't care. Do I wish all of the other extracurricular stories would go away? Do I want to believe my president when he tells me it's raining outside without wondering, maybe I should go check? Yeah, sure I do. Sure. Sure I do. So do you. The thing is, if the president paid his lawyer to pay off a, who's now defined as an actress, fine. Fine. Did he use campaign funds? Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. It's, it's not a felony if he did. It's not great if he did, but it's, I, don't think it's, I don't think it rises to the occasion of felony. The FEC could probably look on the number of people running for office across the country and find something wrong with all of them if they want to audit, but they don't. They're government workers. They want to go in, play some solitaire, kick their feet up. They're actually no different than us. We're making it. We're doing fine. We, you and I and a lot of people out there are doing fine. Do you give credit to Trump or do you give credit to Washington pulling themselves out of our lives? That's a question I want to start off with. 
It's Friday. We're making it. And not all the news is bad, even though a lot of people will tell you the news is bad. Everything's bad. Everything's awful. It's, it's just, don't go outside. Trump and Giuliani aren't on the same page. It's bad. No, it's not. It's not bad. Trump and Giuliani may, may not be on the same page. And hey, if you got time in your busy day, go ahead, check out that story. As frustrating but entertaining as it seems to be, it's not affecting us. 844-344-DANA. 844-344-3262. U.S. jobless rate has fallen below 4% for the first time since December 2000. That's almost 18 years. Okay? Do you give credit to the president or not? And if you don't give credit to the president, to what do you attribute all this success? My name's Nate Shellman, filling in for Dana from Boise, Idaho. You're listening to The Dana Show. If you've never heard of nitric oxide, listen up. Nitric oxide is one of the most important molecules in your body. It promotes healthy circulation, which gets the oxygen and nutrients flowing throughout the body and helps support healthy blood pressure. And you can help your body produce nitric oxide naturally by drinking Super Beets. Only Super Beets is made from non-GMO beets, carefully grown, and then concentrated into superfood crystals. Mix a teaspoon into a few ounces of water with your choice of the mild berry or black cherry flavor. The nutrients in Super Beets are concentrated in a way that makes them usable to the body to create nitric oxide safely and naturally. So to erase fatigue and increase your body's nitric oxide levels, call 800-664-5617 or go to danasbeats.com. With your first order, get another 30-day supply of Super Beats free, plus indicator strips to see how Super Beats is working for you. And free shipping. Call 800-664-5617 or visit danasbeats.com today. Spanning coast to coast and all over Flyover Nation. The Dana Show. Nate Shellen out of Boise, Idaho, filling in for Dana here on The Dana Show. She will be back on Monday. In the meantime, in the meantime, not everything is bad. I know if you want to look at, I, I have three TVs right by me. I have three TVs. People are talking about Mueller. People, oh, Mike Pence's doctor resigned abruptly. Okay, bad news, bad news. Let's take a look over at uh, no Fox and commercial. Okay. Two out of three are bad. Oh, wait a second. We have 3.9% unemployment. That's a great thing. The market's up for now. It's a roller coaster, but the market's up for now over 300. It's not bad. Is this Trump's doing or not? And why is it so hard? If it's not Trump's doing, by the way, who do you give credit to? If you don't think it's because of the president, fine. But you have to tell me who you give credit to. 844-344-DANA. David, California, you're on the Dana Show. Go ahead. Oh, honey. Hey, uh, I, before I start, uh, I, I don't think I've heard your voice before. Uh, what have you done with Dana? Uh, Dana is, well, Dana's at the NRA convention. So I think she's speaking for, I I didn't do any, by the way, hold on a second. I didn't do anything with Dana. I I didn't do a thing. I actually, I, um, I, I've spoken with her a couple times in my life, but, um, no, she, she's not in the trunk of my car or anything, David. All right. She, she's fine. She's, she'll be back on Monday. She'll be back on Monday. Don't worry. Yeah. I was interested in the economy and, uh, the, uh, you know, the, in in history, I'm a real history nut. So when you start looking at the economy uh, in lean times and in prosperous times, it's always a smart idea to reinvest. Uh, you know, locally is a real good idea. Uh, but to, if if you've got prosperous times, it's a smart idea to you know reestablish your your norms uh you know if your schools and universities and roads and bridges need fixing and you're flush with money bam slam it in there you know if you're going to run into uh, lean times you don't want to uh uh you know be scraping for money and doing stuff on the cheap so i'm if we really are in a prosperous economy as i keep hearing uh where is the reinvestment 
You are you asking you me, or are you asking your local state? Are, are, are you asking the state of California? Are you asking your city? Are you asking your county? Who, or who are you asking that yeah, question yeah. to? We need, well, exactly. We need to put in a claim to make sure that, that America is made stronger by, uh, by you know, re, uh, reinvesting while times are good. And one of the biggest things that, uh, that I'm noticing is, is that we're getting two messages. We're being told that uh, the poor are too rich to get anything, and so we've got to cut them off, and that the rich are too poor to pay taxes so that we have to give them a break. So the rich are too poor and the poor are too rich. So that something something's not fixing, uh, you know, something's not mixing right in that uh, those scenarios. But what's what? David, do you like the way things are going on right now? Uh, well, I'm I'm not seeing reinvestment in say like nuclear power plants. You know, those things are are as dangerous as you can get. And just the other day, Trump said that they don't need. Oh, to have, uh, whoa, 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 whoa! Time, time, time out, time out, David, time out, David. You want reinvestment in nuclear power plants, and I and I know a little bit of something about this because I've seen it happen a couple places. Anytime somebody wants to put up a nuclear power plant, there's a whole bunch of people that will slam as many people as they can possibly slam with every lawsuit they can think of to the point where it's not even worth it for a lot of companies. They spend most of their they spend a lot of their costs in court costs. That's that's overhead. That's I, I unnecessary you're, overhead. I don't, I don't think you're following what I'm saying. The nuclear power plants were just told uh, a week or so ago that they don't need to have a stash of money for the safe disposal of radioactive waste. That the hazardous wastes uh, across America are now, that the companies can steal that pot of money that used to be there for the cleanup. And that the taxpayers are going to be stuck with the cleanups. So for decades, the nuclear power plants were supposed to put aside money for the cleanup uh, operations. And now Trump says, oh, you can keep that money and, and the taxpayers are going to be stuck with it. So when I say reinvest in the nuclear power plants, I'm talking about making sure that these old boys don't take the money and run. And they're going to do it. So, you know, this All whole right. idea... I, I asked, I, David, I asked you a simple question. If you like the way things were going, you give me nuclear power plants. But I appreciate the call. And you know what? There's always going to be something. If you look hard enough, there's always going to be something to complain about. Everybody has their niche. And I don't fully disagree with David. Let me get a quick five in here. It's time for Dana's Quick Five. All right, New York City, they're trying to make things safer. They want to bring safe injection sites to New York City. So if you're doing illegal drugs, New York City wants to give you a safe place to do that. What a great idea. Uh, Department of Health and Human Services is going to review Planned Parenthood funding. 200 senators, state senators, federal senators, want Department of uh, Health and Human Services to rescind all taxpayer dollars. Let's see here. Twitter wants you to change your password because, well, a lot of usernames and passwords were uh, were leaked. They could be at uh, they could be at risk. Pentagon has confirmed that the Chinese has fired lasers at U.S. pilots. We'll come back to that story here in just a little bit. And the deputy consul general of Israel forced out of an Uber ride for speaking Hebrew on his phone. This is the Dana Show. Listen live around the world at DanaRadio.com. Thank you very much, Stephen, for playing our unofficial state anthem. Appreciate it. Nate Shellman here in Boise, Idaho, filling in for Dana here on The Dana Show. She will be back on Monday. Don't worry. She's not gone forever. She's, she's at the NRA convention. And if I, uh, Stephen, did I understand this right? That she's she's speaking before President Trump, or she's introducing President Trump? No, well, one, one of the two. She's not introducing the president. I'm not sure. The schedule is very tentative about just sort of you know security issues and things like that. So um, I'm not sure. sure. I know the, I know the president's going to speak within the next hour or so there. So I'm not sure, but all right, no, I'm, she's uh, there. I'm going to. She's there. All right. We'll we'll get a full report from her on Monday. I'm looking at CNN right now. Trump arrives for NRA speech as White House battles credibility crisis. He's there. He's pulling up. Fox Business. Trump expected to tout 3.9% unemployment at NRA speech this hour. 
as well he should. Now think about it. Under your watch, I don't. If, if you're a small business owner and sales go up, you may not have sold more stuff, but somebody who you hired, who you pay, did, and you get to you get to share credit of the success. That's how it works. All right, if, if you're in charge and you're in charge of making stuff and your machines didn't break for a whole three months, you probably produce more that quarter. That's success. Maybe it's a little bit of luck, but it's still success under your watch. You get to claim it. Unemployment's 3.9%, and people still can't get away from, well, so did he know he was paying for hush money, or did he not know? Why didn't you guys tell us? Why didn't you guys tell us? Well, listen, I'm entertained by that whole story as much as anybody else is. I mean, I, and I can't lie. I am just entertained by it. But please, I am entertained by it. The White House didn't tell me the U.S. jobless rate was 3.9%. The Labor Department did. So I trust them. I trust them. I trust them. Now, a lot of people say, oh, unemployment's very low. You know what that means? That means we're headed toward despair. We're headed toward an overheated economy, and we're headed toward recession because that's what happened last time. You know what? I'm not an economist. And I'm also tired of living in a world where I'm perpetually, every day, supposed to be scared or feel like everything is going to blow up or catch fire. Why can't I enjoy this? Why is that so wrong? I'm just a, I'm just like everybody else is trying to make it, right? But I have, I have people who have alphabets after their name telling me that low unemployment is a bad thing. Wait, what? Okay. I, so immediately, like some people, wait, are you, you're trying to make me feel stupid. Okay. All right. John, Indiana, you're on the Dana Show. Afternoon, Nate. Afternoon, Nate. John. Hey, yeah, uh, just want John to is is three point nine percent unemployment a bad thing? No, no, it's absolutely not a bad thing. And and let me tell you something. I am a small business owner. As a matter of fact, I run a small little plumbing company. I have a one car garage that my dad gave me a small loan to start. I work my rear end off. 24 hours a day, seven days a week for a year and a half, like you're supposed to do in this country. And I built something now Trump deserves the credit for what he, what he has done. Does he speak off the cuff without talking to his advisors? Of course he does. We all do. We all know that. <laughs> it happens. Okay. Well. But so, so what the bottom line is since just with what he's done with the tax cuts, I was able to give one of my guys a raise. I'm talking a little business. I got one, two full-time guys, four company trucks, and another part-time guy. I'm never off. I always work. I love it. I love the way the economy is going. I'm able to do small little things for my guys that, you know, in the big scheme of things, it's not Pelosi money. But you know what? It makes them smile. It makes them feel good. And they appreciate the work. They appreciate their job. The thing that has disturbed me most about our country the last few years, I see it leaning towards this socialism. Let me hand you something, and you be satisfied with that so we can do what we want up here while you're not watching. And socialism kills capitalism. We finally have a man in office who says, you know what? We're going to do this the way it was built. I, <clears throat> I was fortunate to have a business owner show me that if you work for it, this econ- this, this, this country is designed to – build wealth to create wealth and i'm building something and that is worth everything john good luck to you man keep that growth going all right best wishes appreciate the call here on the dana show 844-344-DANA 844-344-3262 i'm being told right now i'm being told right now that 3.9% unemployment, lowest unemployment since December of 2000, lowest unemployment of 17 plus years could be a bad thing. The lowest unemployment rate could be a bad thing. And I'm 
tired of feeling bad. I'm tired of being scared. John said something, uh, and, and people say this in their vernacular. People say this in their language. Oh, the bottom line. The bottom line is the bottom line. That's the point. The bottom line actually is the bottom line. That last line on the ledger. Are we doing good or not? And on the ledger, there's no column for how many uh, how, how many reporters are upset with Trump. Now Neil Cavuto and his rant. We'll play a little bit about uh, about of, of that back later on in the program. I actually agreed with a lot of what Neil Cavuto said in his rant. The thing is, and a lot of people in the media have to understand this, that frustration doesn't actually register in the bottom line. It doesn't. It's in a different book. It's not even in the page that counts. The bottom line is the bottom line. The government is spending less money. I know that sounds ridiculous, but the government, even with the last omnibus bill, the government is spending less money. The bottom line is the bottom line. People have more money in their pocket. Wage uh, wage growth hasn't been great, but it's still been growth, and it's a lot better than unemployment growth. The jobless rate has fallen. You thought it was you thought oh, 4.1. Ooh, it's not going to get much lower than that. 3.9. 3.9, I got the Wall Street Journal telling saying, oh, well, you know, if it gets too low, uh, we're headed straight toward uh we're headed, we're headed, we're headed straight toward a recession. 844-344-DANA. 844-344-3262. I'm being told, I'm a simple monkey, I'm being told that this great number is a bad thing. And I I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't buy it. Bard, Indy, you're on the Dana Show. Go ahead, Bard. Well, good afternoon. Uh, I am calling in primarily in reference to one of the previous callers who made the tidbit about uh, going off on nuclear power and whatnot. Now, I hear the, saw the, the Department of Labor stats on, on unemployment 3.9, so of course the sky is going to fall. Um, realistically, though, <laughs> where we sit, uh, when you look at the, the winter we had, just looking at local, local stuff, you saw all the potholes that emerged. Well, you know, if we didn't have the such a – good environment that everybody was proud of working in uh, or being a part of, then you wouldn't see the speed with which all those repairs are being made. Now it's taken them some time, but now that's just a little piece of, you know, here locally. Um, I was going to say, Bart, because there's somebody in some other city in some other state that's been staring at a pothole for three months listening to you going, oh, maybe things aren't so bad in Indianapolis. Yeah, interesting. All right. And they're fixing potholes with the quickness over there. No doubt. Um, so one of the things that the, the one previous caller mentioned, you know, in terms of reinvestment, it does apply. Um, and I'm a not a conventional thinker. I am a small monkey like you. But when we look ahead at technology and where it can take us in terms of innovation, there is a lot of red tape that's unnecessary that prevents some of those um, – investments from being realized in specifically with respect to nuclear power and i'll say it there there's other capabilities out there that aren't nearly so uh dangerous as pressure water cooled reactors such as the whole molten salt reactor such as li- liquid fluoride thorium reactors they're a lot safer we haven't gotten there 50 60 years ago the technology was brought china's going there france is starting to go there you know, investment in those areas to provide some of those renewable energy sources can do more good than harm. I just want all right, to say. fascinating, Bart, Bart, Bart. I, I one day when you will tell me all about uh, nuclear technology, and I will be in the mood to listen. Today, unfortunately, Bart, it's not that day. Um, I, I, I ask simple <laughs> questions. You know why? Because it's Friday, Bart. That's why it's Friday. I've had my mind melted like you've had your mind melted all stinking week long. Okay. And the difference between you and me is I'm a Cavs fan, so I have something to look forward to this weekend. But, sorry for the cheap shot. Are we? Is the country doing well? I'm asking you. I, just as a guy, I if you want to talk to me as a small business owner as, or as some, as some jabroni, do you feel the country is on the right path? 
I think generally speaking, there are a lot of positive things that are coming out of this um, in terms of some of the census from um, a lot of different communities. Uh, I would say that um, economically, uh, we're in a good place. Appreciate the call bar. Who do you give credit for? Who do you give credit for that? Who do I give credit for that? I don't know. At this point, who should get the credit for that, to be perfectly honest? Okay. You know what? I I like that. That's a fair answer. It sounds like you actually – no, and I'm serious. It sounds like you actually put some thought into that. Now, I would say – and again, appreciate the call, Bart. I would say that it's going to drive people nuts. I'm sure President Trump's going to take credit for it at the NRA convention. And why shouldn't he? He's the president. This is happening under his watch. Tell me why he shouldn't take the credit for it. Everybody wants to blame, and I'm sure somebody out there is like, oh, no, it's actually Obama. Zach, Obama set this in motion. Obama's been out of office for, uh, what, what are we going now, 15 months, 16 months? Yeah. Uh, sure, if you like the guy, you're going to give him credit for everything. 16 months later, this is... If this, if you don't think this is President Trump's doing, if you don't think he's in part responsible for this, I'd love to hear why. Unemployment at its lowest since December of 2000. My name's Nate Shellman. 844-344-DANA. This is The Dana Show. Fisking the news media to give you the truth. It's Dana Lash. Nate Shellman out of Boise, Idaho, filling in for Dana here on The Dana Show. She's at the NRA convention. She will be back on Monday. Don't worry, you only have to put up with me for, for just a couple more hours. And you know what? Here's what I'm going to give you to put up with me. All right, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you good news. I know a lot of people don't want to talk about good news because, because, because Giuliani said something and then Trump said something a while ago and then the hooker, I mean, the actress got paid $130,000 and we didn't know what unemployment's 3.9%. Uh, and you know somewhere, somewhere, somewhere with the good news that comes out because there, there's some marked good news that's coming out unemployment 3.9 percent and you know everybody who's against trump both right and left Mm -hmm. don't think for a second he doesn't have people in the the republican party that are trying to work against him that don't like him either are sitting there looking at the labor department report how the how the heck how is this happening market today up over 300 points right now, okay? Market today. Everybody's questioning his credibility, and fine, go ahead. Maybe maybe he knew, maybe he didn't know. Who knows? Meanwhile, we're succeeding. We, the country, are succeeding. We, you and I, us. 844-344-DANA 844-344-3262 Do you give credit to Trump for this? Or not? John, Indiana, you're on the Dana Show. Go ahead, John. Yeah, hi, thanks for taking my call. Um, I, I think with the job numbers and all that, I mean, job growth slowed a little bit since uh, Trump took office. I mean, that's true. O- Obama, it was better under Obama. But apparently Obamacare is not the job killer that Republicans claimed it was. I mean, the healthcare industry's hiring like crazy. I mean, the job growth there has been explosive. The uninsured rate was at decades low un- until Trump's tried to sabotage it, and the uninsured rate is, is going back up now. And, you know, we get to pay for those deadbeats at the uh, emergency room. They pay nothing to get treated in the emergency room. The people that do have insurance pay more. I mean, I don't know what the reasoning was behind that, but that will come up and bite us. And no one's talking about China stopped buying soybeans from the United States. And in Indiana, that's a big deal. I mean, we, we, I think across the country, we produce about 4 billion bushels of uh, soybeans. And China's not buying them anymore. And that's not good for business. Okay. And I, I, but why everyone okay. doesn't mention so, that? So life it's isn't good. Are, are, are you tell, are you telling me, John, that life isn't good? Are you telling me that that the country not, isn't doing well? Not for the farmers. Not for the not for the people that put Trump in office. I mean, they they're getting kicked right in the teeth, and they're putting soybeans in right now, and the futures are down, and it's serious. 
And it's, and it's okay. all because Trump Do you think this... runs his, laughing his jaws. What? I think and at the same time, the maybe he's uh, working. Oh, you don't want an answer. Got it. Okay. Sorry. You don't want an answer. No, go ahead. Okay. It's in the, it's I think in this trade war. I th- Again, you don't want an answer, John. You don't want an answer. You don't like the guy, and I get it, man. He's very easy to not like. I understand. I get why you out. don't He's like him. He's taking money out of our pocket. He's taking well, money out of our pocket. I don't think that's true. You want it to be true. You're the only one who's calling up to say that's true. So if one person's saying it and nobody else is backing him up, I will let John. No, 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 John. I'll let you go off on that limb all on your own. Go ahead. It's a free country. Go ahead. Go ahead. The sky's look the, falling. Look at the soybean. The sky's look falling. The, soybean. Into, the sky's falling for John. John's life is awful. All the soybean no, farmers my, my, in Indiana are going. They're they're actually going to die tomorrow. That's what's going to happen. And it's all because of Trump. It's all because of Trump. John. No. 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 John. You're right. You're right. John. I. I. I now. I. I see where you're coming from. It's all bad. Nobody will buy soybeans ever. Just China. Just China. And it's all Trump's fault. I get it, John. I get it. John, you're right. Thank you for the call. You're right. You're right. No, no, no. You're right. I get it. You're right. You are correct. You're correct. Trump is the worst thing to hit this country. I I get it. I get it. Obama was better. I get it. You don't like the guy. And again, he's very easy to not like. See, the people can't take good news. People can't accept good news. Unemployment, lowest it's been since December of 2000. Well, we're not able... China's not buying stuff. You think China's the only country that's going to buy soybeans? My name's Nate Shelman, filling in for Dana. This is The Dana Show. Nate Shelman here in Boise, Idaho, from the KBY Studios, filling in for Dana here on The Dana Show. And... First of all, it's, it's again, it's my pleasure. She's at the NRA convention. She'll be back on Monday. Mike Pence speaking right now. President Trump expected to speak later on. And as I look, I, I'm i in the studios right now because I, I, I just kicked everybody out. And we get TV here in, in, in Boise, Idaho. We, we have satellite. It's, it's everything. We got It's just potatoes and TV. Fields blue, so on. And as I look at... The TVs I have, I, I have Fox, I got CNN, I got Fox Business. Let's see, on Fox right now, um, let's see, they're they're covering the uh, the they're covering the Manafort prosecutors. You only care about getting information to prosecutor and impeach Trump. That's their headline over on CNN. They're talking about Giuliani and his reference of, to timing of Stormy Daniels payment was my understanding, not Trump's. Uh, we got Pence speaking at the NRA convention in Dallas. So here we go. You have, I know, I know, I know it's it's three different channels. I know CNN, Fox, and Fox Business are Fox and Fox Business are the same network. But nobody's talking about unemployment being the lowest it's been in seventeen years, so over seventeen years. The only other t- the the time that unemployment was this, was this low was December of two thousand. It was the last time the unemployment numbers were this low. The market's up 361. No one's talking about that save for the market ticker. Nobody. No one's talking about that. No one's talking about anything good. They're only talking about... (laughs) Can I say that on air? Or do you want to out yourself, Steven? Guys, Steven, Steven just sent me a note. Uh, Stephen working the uh, pushing the buttons and pulling the strings there in uh, master control. December of 2000, Stephen, who's answering the phones today for the Dana show, was just turning six years old. Think about that for a second. Now, this isn't about right versus left. This isn't about Trump is so much better than Obama. This isn't about the Republicans are so much better than the Democrats. Because all people want to focus on today, all people want to focus on now, is who knew what and when did they know it? Who knew what, when did they know it? Uh, let's see here. What was that reporter that was losing their mind with, uh, with Sarah Sanders? Was it April Ryan? Was it April Ryan that was that was losing her mind with Sarah Sanders? It's either her or Jim Acosta. They both continue to lose their mind. 
Yeah, Acosta loses his mind constantly. Um, yeah, so you know what? Let's let's get a little bit of uh, Jim Acosta. This was yesterday, uh, Acosta and Sarah Sanders. I think that's cut ten, sir. Ten, okay. Yeah, cut ten. Let's let's hear a little bit about that. Uh, the White House press office was coordinating with the president's all these outside allegations. Legal. Were you lying to us at the time, or were you in the dark? Uh, the president has denied and continues to deny the underlying claim. And again, I've given the best information I had at the time, and I would refer you back to the comments that you yourself just mentioned uh, a few minutes ago about the timeline from Mayor Giuliani. Okay. How about April Ryan? That's cut eight. April Ryan, cut eight. I believe so. Are you, why Sorry, didn't he, I'm going to take the last call, question like I promised to, it. Why didn't you talk to the White House press office about his impacting stellar statements about what was happening? Uh, the, the White State. House press office wouldn't coordinate with the president's outside legal team on legal well, strategy. Blindside. You said yourself well, you were blindsided. I actually didn't use that term. Well, I said it, but you were blindsided from <laughs> what you said. Well, for uh, with all due respect, you actually don't know much about me in terms of what I feel and what I don't. I uh, understand how this operates. All right, I think uh, we're good. Molly, go ahead. I'd love to see how much the White House press corps wants to ask Sarah Sanders about 3.9% unemployment, lowest unemployment rate in over 17 years. Folks, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that everything is fine and there's nothing that 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 needs fixed because there's a lot of things that need fixed. Okay, not every it's not sunshine and lollipops. All right, there's not a rainbow in every sky across the country. All right. Not everybody has a million dollars in their bank account. I get it. I get it. There are people out there who are hurting, struggling. I understand. But at what point? At what point do you do you have the soap opera on and believe that that is literally the only thing going on in the country? We talked a lot about it yesterday. I would love to believe everything that comes out of the White House, that comes out of Sarah's. I'd love to believe that she knows what's going on. I'd love to believe that President Trump knows what's going on. And the fact of the matter is, I don't know. But here's what I do know. We are succeeding. The country is succeeding. Maybe it's out of maybe it's in spite of everything else that's going on. Maybe it's because Washington has somehow managed to pull themselves a little more out of our lives against their will yeah it's a it's a it's a hard it's a hard message to get out there especially if you're a bureaucrat or or a, or a lawmaker unemployment's 3.9 percent i got the wall street journal telling me today well be careful because when when unemployment was this low uh the economy overheated and we fell into re- a recession of course it had nothing to do with the housing bubble by the way but it was, it was just because of of unemployment why can't I enjoy something good? Why can't I enjoy good news? 844-344-DANA. 844-344-3262. John, Florida. You're on the Dana Show. Go ahead, John. Hello. Hello. I just want to make sure it was really on. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm extremely happy with uh, Trump right now. Explain. Go ahead. Explain that. All right. I own a small business, and for the last several years, I have had the worst time. Uh, I do a small pressure washing painting business, so I require, I require the economy to do good for people to call me for business. This last year, I have been so busy that I've actually had to turn work away to other contractors because I am unable at this time to find qualified people to work. So I, a, I know Trump. I, yes. How qualified do I have to be to hold a pressure washing hose? Well, that's the thing. You don't have to be. And I get people that come in and say, you can't make me get on a ladder because they've been on SSI or Social Security, and it's nonstop. That's, that's the life they have been used to in this small town. And I'm, I'm just being so honest. It's just almost impossible to find employees. Other than that, I think it's been working great, whether he's done anything or just the threat that he was going to make America better 
which help make people push along and start doing a little bit more for themselves. You know, that, that there's something interesting in that message, John. I appreciate the call. There's something interesting in there because it seems like for so long we were told time and time again how much we needed Washington, how how dependent we had to be on Washington. You need us to guide you through. You need us. Only we. And then one of the messages that came out lately was, no, you don't actually need us. You don't. We need to get out of your way. The government of this country needed to get out of the people's way. And it's a message we hadn't heard. Furthermore, backed up by the message that we can actually build, grow, do anything here. That empowerment part. You don't actually need government to hold your hand every step of the way. You don't need them to feed you from cradle to grave. We are, for the most part, we are grown adults. But don't tell a number of people in Washington that. And don't tell a number of people in the TV media that because they just want to focus on all the bad, 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 bad stuff. Negative, 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 negative. Wait a second. No, let me, let me check again. Oh, they're in the, all three of them. They, they all take commercial breaks at the same time. Interesting. I've barely seen... So far today, I have barely seen the lowest unemployment rate in over 17 years splashed across all the network screens at the same time. No, they're still talking about Giuliani and Trump and when the actress got paid and who knew it and Cohen and all that. They're still talking about that. uh, 3.9% unemployment to me is great. I got the Wall Street Journal saying, "Eh, oh, Um, it may not be, it may not be, no, more people have jobs. It may be a bad sign that bad things are coming. 844-344-DANA, 844-344-3262. If you're a small business owner, if you have hired somebody in the past, uh, say 14 months, what allowed you to do that? If you're paying less in taxes, what allowed you to do that? Who do you, if you're growing or you're back at work, do you give government the credit for that? Or do you be a little selfish? You go, wait a second. No, I I got my stuff together. I I got trained. I got a job. 844-344-DANA. The country's not doing superb. I don't know if it's an A plus because I don't have a million dollars in my bank account. But I'm also saying I'm also here telling you that the country isn't broken. Yeah, there's a there's a soap opera going on. There's a porn star involved and some lawyers and Rudy Giuliani. He's a, he's a new character in that. But the country isn't broken by a long shot. My name's Nate Shellman, filling in for Dana here on the Dana Show. It's the Dana Show. Nate Shellman here out of Boise, Idaho, filling in for Dana here on the Dana Show. She's at the NRA convention. She will be back on Monday. In the meantime, it's you and us, and it's Friday. We've worked all week. We've had a, we've had a couple days of drama, and we got a, we got a little Friday nugget for you. Unemployment, according to the U.S. Labor Department, unemployment is at the lowest it's been since Stephen was turning six. It's the lowest it's been since December of two thousand, and. I'm looking at Rudy Giuliani still talking about Comey, still talking about the investigation. No one's talking about that. No one's talking about that. At all. Except us here. Everybody wants you to be so that the TV media wants you to be so fixated on this actress because let's face it, she's an adult actress. They don't want you to actually think for a second that, wait a second, this country actually isn't going in a bad direction. Some weird stuff's happening, you know, in Washington and in, in investigation. But not everything is bad. 844-344-DANA. 844-344-3262. Let me get, uh, oh gosh, let me get Steve in Indy. Steve, you're on the Dana Show. Go ahead, Steve. Hi. Go ahead, Steve. You there? Yes, sir. 
Yeah, uh, I think everything's great. I mean, uh, the employment, it's great. I see jobs everywhere. There's, I'm looking at a sign, they got a big sign out, hiring. So, it's, it's McDonald's, Steak and Shake, everywhere has got hiring signs. So, really, the job rate should be even lower. Well, you know, listen, not, not everything was fixed in a day, and things do ebb and flow, Steve, and I appreciate the call. I mean, you know, it, it would be great. It would be great. I imagine, what would this country be like if everybody who could work had a job? Would we be, would, would this country be awful? I don't think so. Isn't the goal to get everybody hired that's looking for work? To get everybody hired, to get everybody working in a job that they can do, and eventually they'll be going to a job that they want to do and are more qualified for and be able to grow? I think so. I got the Wall Street Journal telling me today that eh, it, eh, low jobless rate might be, uh, might be the economy overheating, going too fast. 844-344-DANA. Can I squeeze Ryan in Florida in? Ryan, you're on the Dana Show. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, hey! Thanks for taking my call. I have a very quick uh, comment. A few of them. I'm a GM of a restaurant. I'm fully staffed now. I I mean, I've been hiring left and right for the past several months, uh, thanks to uh, Trump. What he did for our franchise, what he did for us, was absolutely amazing uh, for the taxes. I'm seeing a $450 increase in paychecks uh, a month for me personally. So, you know, Trump can't please everybody. Uh, I don't care. Who he, who, what he's done with what porn star, I can personally care less what he does. That's none of my business what he does in his personal life. And it's none of anybody else's business, to be quite honest, what he does in his personal life. It's what we voted him to do in office is what matters. 3.9% unemployment rate that is outstanding for our country. It's something to be proud of. It's something for us Americans to stand up and say, you know what? We're proud to be an American. Finally, we're seeing more money in our pockets. We're seeing less government control. Thank you, Mr. Trump. Thank you, President Trump. He's making he's making great strides for the American people. Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic Party is an absolute hypocritical party. We don't care. Ryan, what, Ryan, I appreciate the call. Party. I appreciate it. Keep that keep that food getting out there on time. Let's do a quick five. It's time for Dana's Quick Five. All right, Oklahoma City. They have a bill that would allow carrying guns without a permit in Oklahoma. Constitutional carry. Sweeping the country. Mayor de Blasio in New York City wants to give those doing illegal drugs a safe place. A safe place to inject clean needles so they can not get an infection when they do illegal drugs. GOP wants uh, Planned Parenthood funding to be reviewed. We have that on, on our list as well. Twitter wants you to change your password because nobody can keep anybody's information secret anymore. And we're going to follow up on the Pentagon confirming that China, the China Chinese government has fired lasers at U.S. pilots. My name's Nate Shellman, filling in for Dana here. 3.9% unemployment. We're talking about it on The Dana Show. Giving you the facts from Anchorage to Alabama. It's Dana Lash. Nate Shellman here in Boise, Idaho, filling in for Dana, who is at the NRA convention, where President Trump is expected to take the podium shortly and address the NRA convention. Covering that on the heels of his 3.9%, and it's his. Understand that. He's the president. It's his administration. It's his lowest unemployment number. It's the country's lowest unemployment number since 2000, since December of 2000. And for the first time, all the networks are actually covering Trump talking at the NRA convention. Let's, uh, Let's take a listen to President Trump. NRA 
crowd loving President Trump at the NRA convention. Thank you, thank you folks. Thank you very much. A great honor to be here. And I want to thank Chris. So many people have done such an incredible job. And these are real patriots. They really are. And they don't get the kind of adulation, but really they do. And we know that. I want to thank Wayne LaPierre. I want to thank my friend, our great vice president, Mike Pence, for his terrific remarks. I also want to recognize our great Texas leaders. Do we love Texas? Do we love Texas? Governor Greg Abbott, my friend. Where's Greg? Governor Greg Abbott. And he's running, and I've already done it, but I will tell you, Greg, I fully endorse you. You are endorsed. He has done a great job. I'll tell you, he would, you had your water just pouring down on top, and you just kept coming and coming. He kept calling and calling. We need more money, money, money. And you know what? We gave it to you. Fully endorsed. Attorney General Ken Paxton, tremendous guy. And by the way, Ken, you have my full endorsement, and Angela, your wife, has my full endorsement. She just had a big victory. Senator John Cornyn, been with me right from the beginning. John, thank you. Thank you, John. Full endorsement for this man, Ted Cruz. Where's Ted? Thank you. Well, that was very rousing. That's a good sign. Congressman Pete Sessions and Congressman Mike Burgess, great friends. We're also joined by Pete Ricketts, Dana Love, Charlie Kirk, Diamond and Silk. <laughs> Trying to get a shout out from President Trump. They're so great. Mark Geist, Richard Hutchins, Pete Brownell, and Leslie Rutledge. Finally, I want to thank all of you, the true American patriots of the NRA, who defend our rights, our liberty, and our great American flag. Thank you. Thank you very much. The people in this hall have never taken our freedom for granted, never. And you have never stopped fighting for our beloved Constitution. Credible people, thank you. You give your time, your energy, your vote, and your voice to stand strong for those sacred rights given to us by God including the right to self-defense. And now, thanks to your activism and dedication, you have an administration fighting to protect your Second Amendment, and we will protect your Second Amendment. Your Second Amendment rights are under siege, but they will never, ever be under siege as long as I'm your president. All of us. Thank you. Thank you. All of us here today are united by the same timeless values. We believe that our liberty is a gift from our Creator and that no government 
can never take it away. We believe in the rule of law. And we support the men and women of law enforcement. We have pride in our history and respect for our heritage. We put our hands on our hearts for the Pledge of Allegiance. And we all proudly stand for the national anthem. We proudly stand. President Trump speaking at the NRA convention in Dallas, Texas. Addressing the crowd. This is live with President Trump in Dallas, Texas at the NRA convention. What people, what great people. And this is your record crowd, you know, all-time record crowd. You do know that, so just remember, nice to set record. We love our country, and we believe our citizens deserve a government that shows them the same love and loyalty in return. For the last 15 months, that is exactly what we have been doing. We are all finally putting America first. And we are seeing the incredible results as a result of our massive tax cuts and everybody is benefiting and everybody is happy. And the Democrats are very concerned. You watch how well we do in 18. You watch. You watch. Get out and vote. Don't be complacent. Don't be complacent. You know, history says that when you win the presidency, you get complacent. We all know the feeling. Do you know the feeling? Not too many. Like 90% of the time, you win the presidency, and for whatever reason, you lose the midterm. We can't let that happen. And the word is complacent. You know, I kept thinking to myself, why is that? I wonder why. Think about it. You win. You have this great win. Now you take a breath. You relax. All of a sudden, two years is up. They're fighting like hell, and you're complacent. We cannot get complacent. We have to win the midterms. Because since the election, We've created 3.2 million jobs, unthought of. If we would have said that three years ago during the campaign, people would have said, what a horrible exaggeration. That's so terrible. They wouldn't have believed it. 3.2 million. The unemployment rate, you saw that just today, just fell beneath 4% for the first time since the beginning of this century. You know, I heard it was about 19 years. I said, wait a minute. The beginning of the century sounds better. So I say, the beginning of the century. More beautiful. African-American unemployment has reached another all-time in history record low in history. And by the way, Kanye West must have some power, because you probably saw, I doubled my African-American poll numbers. We went from 11 to 22 in one week. Thank you, Kanye. Thank you. When I saw the number, I said, there must be a mistake. How can that happen? Even the pollsters thought there must be a mistake. Now we've come a long way. You remember I'd come into B2 
big rooms, big audiences. And I'd say, what do you have to lose? Because the Democrats have always had that vote. I'd say, what do you have to lose? Horrible on crime, horrible on education, horrible on everything. I'd say, what do you have to lose? And they voted for me, and we won. But now the numbers are much higher than they ever were with African American. And we're happy. And the same thing with Hispanic American unemployment, which is also at the lowest level in history. Unemployment, lowest level in history. And women, unemployment, women, many women, is at the lowest level in almost 20 years. Think of that. So we have the best employment numbers we've virtually ever had. And yet, all we hear about is this phony Russia witch hunt. That's all we hear about. So, just when I'm walking on the stage, a highly respected judge in Virginia made statements. It says, Wall Street Journal, it says, judge questions Mueller's authority to prosecute Manafort. Now, Paul Manafort, we'll jump in here. President Trump addressing the crowd at the NRA convention in Dallas, Texas. We'll come back to this here on The Dana Show. Stream the podcasts. Tell your Amazon device, Alexa, play The Dana Show podcast. Nate Shellman here in Boise, Idaho, filling in for Dana, who's at the NRA convention in Dallas, Texas, where President Trump continues addressing the crowd at the NRA convention in Dallas, Texas. Let's, let's hear some more of that. So, Ted, I think think they're they're happy with that, I think, think, right? right? So, we've We've delivered. delivered. And And when we were running, running, I would say, we're going to this, we're going to that, we're going to that. A certain person that's not a very fair person in the media said, I have to say, Trump has actually delivered more than he promised, which is probably the first time people have ever heard that statement. We've actually actually delivered delivered more than we promised. promised. And And let me just tell you this. this. We're We're really really doing well well with with North North Korea. Korea. We're really doing well. Right? We're doing real well. Remember they said, oh, it's going to be terrible. They were actually saying, Three months months ago, ago, when the the rhetoric 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 was rather sharp. sharp. Do we agree? agree? I won't won't use the rhetoric rhetoric now. Now I'm trying trying to calm it down a little bit. (laughs) So I'm not going to use the rhetoric. But But let's let's put it... He goes to use it. (laughs) I know you come come from from Texas, Texas, whoever the hell you are. Look, for years, for years they've had this problem. And everybody has said sort of, oh, don't talk, don't talk. Don't talk. Don't please don't talk. The last administration had a policy of silence. Don't talk. You may make them and him angry. Don't talk. If a horrible statement is made about the United States, don't say anything. We have no comment. Please, please. Oh, my God. Same thing with Iran. Remember? We're signing that horrible deal, and they're marching in the streets saying death to America. I said, who signs a deal when they're marching saying death to America? Who marches? They're saying death to America, and we have the former administration. As as represented by John John Kerry. Kerry. Not the best best negotiator we've ever seen. seen. He never walked away from the table, except Except to be in that bicycle bicycle race race where he fell and broke his leg. That's it. (laughs) That was the only time. (laughs) 
I said, don't tell him you broke your leg. Just stay inside. Say you don't want to negotiate. You'll make a much better deal. But he broke his leg. And I learned from that. At 73 years old, you never go into a bicycle race, okay? Just don't. You just don't do that. I'm not 73. He was, okay? Just... But I'll be there. But we have great things going on. And, you know, with respect to North Korea, remember how strong it was? And they were saying, this is going to be nuclear war. We're going to have it. No. You know what gets you nuclear war? Weakness gets you nuclear war. Being weak gets you nuclear war. That's what gets you nuclear war. So let's, so let's talk, talk about, about guns, guns, shall we? <laughs> Paris, France has, has the, the toughest, toughest gun laws, laws in the world. The president, president just left Washington. Washington. Emmanuel, great, great guy. guy. Nobody, nobody has, has guns, guns in Paris, Paris. nobody. And we, and we all, all remember more than 130 people, people plus, plus tremendous, tremendous numbers, numbers of people, people that were Horribly, horribly wounded. You notice nobody ever talks about them. They talk about the people that died, but they never mention that 250 people had horrible, horrible wounds. I mean, they never mention that. But they died in a restaurant and various other close proximity places. They were brutally killed. President Trump at the NRA convention in uh, in Dallas, Texas. He's addressing the crowd there. This is the Dana Show. Nate Shellman here filling in for Dana Lash, who's at the NRA convention. We'll take a break. Be back. You're listening to the Dana Show. Nate Shellman here from the KBY Studios. Boise, Idaho, filling in for Dana here on the Dana Show. She will be back on Monday. She's enjoying the NRA convention. President Trump speaking at the NRA convention today. And a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of networks still hung up on the soap opera that we've been and the country's been talking about for the past couple of days. When did President Trump know he was paying Stormy Daniels? What money did he use? Did he break the law? Did, do, do he and Rudy Giuliani, are they on the same page? Is Rudy Giuliani after, is he trying to undermine President Trump? Is he trying to get in his way? By the way, unemployment, 3.9%. Unemployment, 3.9%. Lowest it has been since December of 2000. Lowest. Lowest. So the soap opera that's going on, this distraction, it's fun, right? I mean, it's entertaining. Grab some popcorn, look at the porn star a couple times. Hey, Rudy Giuliani. Wow, he's not aging well. All right, he's saying stuff. President Trump is saying stuff. Cohen's saying stuff. People are saying stuff about them saying stuff. Everybody's saying stuff. Stormy Daniels' lawyers saying stuff. Unemployment, 3.9%. How the heck is that happening? And it's driving people nuts. It's driving, I don't know if I want to say enemies, but it's drawing. It's driving those who are not on the same page, not on the same team as President Trump, that wish for his demise one way, shape, or form. It's driving him nuts. Because this guy is supposed to be the worst president ever. Unemployment, 3.9%. So far, today, for a little bit, the Dow was uh, was up over uh, up 400 points. Now still up over 360. Dow on an upswing today, in part because unemployment 3.9 percent lowest it's been since December of 2000. I'm frustrated. I get frustrated with the president. I get frustrated with his antics, and so do you. Neil Cavuto. Neil Cavuto to me, actually did a pretty good rant. A pretty good rant. I think Neil Cavuto expressed a lot of the frustrations I have about President Trump. Listen to some of Neil Cavuto. 
President Trump is fond of calling out the media on fake news, but is he the one giving them very real ammunition? Maybe not intentionally. I'll even give you the benefit of the doubt, Mr. President, and say maybe not deliberately, but consistently, way too consistently. So let me be clear, Mr. President. How can you drain the swamp if you're the one who keeps muddying the waters? You didn't know about that $130,000 payment to a porn star until you did. Said you knew nothing about how your former lawyer, Michael Cohen, handled this until acknowledging today you were the guy behind the retainer payment that took care of this. You insist that money from the campaign or campaign contributions played no role in this transaction. Of that, you're sure. Thing is, not even 24 hours ago, sir, you couldn't recall any of this, and you seem very sure. Now, I'm not saying you're a liar, you're president, you're busy. I'm just having a devil of a time figuring out which news is fake. Let's just say your own words on lots of stuff give me, shall I say, lots of pause. Like the time you said the Russians didn't interfere in the 2016 election until a lot of Republicans had to remind you they did. Came back months later and you said, well, I never said that Russia didn't meddle in the election when, in fact, you had a lot. Now, none of this makes me a never-Trumper, just always confused. Like when you claimed your tax plan was the biggest in U.S. history, when it wasn't, or that the bill you signed to make it all happen would cost you a fortune, when it turns out it is going to help make you a bigger fortune, or that your job approval numbers really aren't that bad, uh, relative to other presidents at this stage, when they're actually worse than most presidents at this stage. That can change, but what's weird is this pattern does not. Like the time that you said rumors of Rex Tillerson's departure at the State Department were false, until they weren't, or that your former chief of staff, Reince Priebus, wasn't going anywhere until he was, or your economic advisor, Gary Cohn, was doing a great job until he wasn't, when you absolutely loved Steve Bannon until you didn't, swore by Jeff Sessions until you started swearing at Jeff Sessions, had your legal team locked in place until it wasn't, denied reports you were ever thinking about firing Robert Mueller, even as you now threaten getting involved at the Justice Department. Now, none of this makes you evil, but I'm sure you can understand why even your friends say these inconsistencies don't make you look good. And I get caught up in that as well. I get caught up in that same Neil Cavuto frustration. And I'm, I'm, I'm watching that. I'm listening to it. I go, you know what? Yeah, he's letting them have it. And here's the pause. All of that, amazingly enough, I don't know if it's amazing or ironic, but I'll go with amazing, doesn't define President Trump, doesn't define this administration. The media wants it to. The Democrats want it to. Those who wish the president's policies to fail and wish for this country to go backward want all of that stuff to define the Trump administration, and it doesn't. It's not the story anybody else is going to tell. It's not. And I am not known as a cheerleader for President Trump. I'm not. I'm highly critical of the guy. If he would stop being a jerk, communicating like a jerk on Twitter, Double-checking facts, figures. A lot more people would like him. A lot more people would like him. Even if they weren't in the same party as him, more people would like him. And the likability to me is kind of important. Here's the thing. President Trump has been able to accomplish a lot. The administration, the country, has been able to accomplish a lot with a lot of the people eh, not having a favorable opinion of how much President Trump tells the truth. But the country is working. Literally, the country is working. 3.9%. This country is able to accomplish some great things. And President Trump has been able to accomplish some things, again, amazingly, as it is. He's been able to pull Washington back against their will and allow us to succeed without having to give credit and accolades 
to an administration that gives us everything. We don't have to depend on the government to succeed, as we've been told for so many years. No. This administration said, all right, we're going to get out of your way. We're going to give you a little more money in your pocket. We're going to lower your taxes, and then uh, you do what you do. Get that job, get that education, hire more people, give people bonuses, expand. In the meantime, he's going to put on a show. And that's exactly what the country has done. You want to put Stormy Daniels on every uh, on every TV? Fine, go ahead. For 3.9% unemployment, send the guy more porn stars. You want to investigate whether or not there was collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia? Are you kidding me? Am I really supposed to expect that the Russian government colluded with somebody of the U.S. government? So most of us, th- the lowest... Unemployment numbers since December of 2000, so that most of us could go back to work? That, that's, that's what you're selling me? Oh, maybe I could be like the Wall Street Journal. Who buys the 3.9? They, they get it. Unemployment fallen to 3.9%. And the last time it fell this way, the economy was overheated and we fell into a recession. So now I'm supposed to believe that low unemployment, extremely low unemployment is a bad thing. Why can't I just enjoy it? My name's Nate Shellman. I'm filling in for Dana Lash, and I give President Trump credit for this. In part. I also give in part credit for this us. Us. The small business, big business, restaurant general managers, power washers, students. I give us credit for this as well. We're just going to go ahead and just do our thing, and people are letting us do our thing. 844-344-DANA. 844-344-DANA. The country's not perfect. The president sure as heck isn't perfect. But we're not... We're not going to hell in a handbasket like so many people wish would happen. And it's driving at least the TV media BS crazy. It is. It's driving them guano crazy. Because how is this guy able to act, tweet, behave, speak the way he does? And the market's still over 300 points up today. Unemployment, doing great. Korea War, coming to an end. Syria knows we're not playing around. People who are here illegally know that that's that's not going to be tolerated. Huh. Maybe the sideshow isn't such a bad sideshow. Maybe maybe I can maybe I should learn to tolerate that sideshow a little bit because it doesn't define everything. Your take on how the country's doing. In fact, if you've hired somebody, if you're a small business owner, you tell me. You read me the tea leaves. You tell me what your life has been like as a small or large business owner in the past 14 months. 844-344-DANA. My name's Nate Shellman. Filling in for Dana on The Dana Show. It's The Dana Show. Nate Shellman in Boise, Idaho. Filling in for Dana here on The Dana Show. She will be back on Monday. Don't panic. She's fine. She's okay. She was just enjoying President Trump. Got a shout out from President Trump at the NRA convention in Dallas. He's not getting a shout out from too many other people. Um, uh, Stephen, by the way, you caught up on this. President Trump even sent a shout out to uh, Ted Cruz. And I wanted, I was wondering if he was going to give a Lion Ted shout out. And as soon as I thought it, Stephen typed it in the computer to me. So we were both thinking the same thing. Is he going to call him Lion Ted? That'd be funny. Uh, also, Stephen, did I, did I hear boos for Cruz? I think did I, did, I didn't. I didn't hear all cheering. No, I think they were saying his last name loudly. That's what it was. Oh, Cruz. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I get it. It's Cruz. Ah, oh, okay. That's it. But the country isn't failing, and it's driving people who hate Trump nuts. I don't hate Trump. He drives me nuts once in a while. I don't hate him. The country's not failing. It's driving people crazy. To the point where 
they don't even want to talk about the good stuff that's going on. They're still the TV networks are still talking about Giuliani and Cohen and Stormy Daniels and and all that stuff. Meanwhile, what's more important? Who paid the <clears throat> actors when, what, or unemployment? Lowest it's been since December of 2000. 844-344-DANA. Greg, Indiana, you're on The Dana Show. Yes, yeah, thanks, thanks for taking my call. Um, I think the, uh, the unemployment is just uh, awesome. Um, I am a general contractor, and I've had more business than I can handle. I've even raised my rates, and I still have more business than I can handle. General contractor, so uh, you're, what, buildings, or what, 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 what are you doing there? Well, I do, uh, well, handyman stuff, uh, just, just pretty much anything from, you know, you name it, for the most part. I don't, uh, I don't specialize in any one thing, um, but my business is going great. I'm actually about to start a new business uh, in addition to what I'm doing, um, but the, the guy who called previously, just really, not previously, just now, but a while ago, really frustrated me with the whole the whole uh, Obamacare and stuff. My health insurance went up 400%. And um, most of my doctors won't even take insurance anymore. They want cash. Um, I've got a wife with CP and a son that's autistic. And so we, we do a lot of stuff with doctors. And I'm just wishing that we'd get back to the way it was pre-Obama. Like affordable? That's my only, my only frustration. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, affordable. affordable. Yeah. yeah, affordable, reasonable. Affordable. Gr- um, and Greg, yeah. here's the thing, Greg. You're doing the right thing, yeah. though. You're not waiting for everybody else to to do it. You're doing your. You're providing. That's that's dad's job. That's husband's job. You're doing your thing. You're not crying to the government. I mean, by the way, you know we're all feeling that health care pinch. Maybe not as bad yeah. as you. Bless your heart, man. But, I mean, honestly, you're doing the right thing. Thank you. Uh, you got me. I mean, honestly, I, awesome. there's a lot of people that would have quit and walked away. You're in there providing, doing your job, Greg, and I appreciate the call. I'm not saying everything's perfect. Man, the, the, the next victory to lower the cost of health care. Oh, oh, don't tell me it's impossible. Don't tell me it's impossible. Don't tell me this administration can't get it done. It would be great if Congress would actually play along. Let's do a quick five. It's time for Dana's Quick Five. All right, if you can't beat them and you can't stop them, well, give them clean needles and a safe place to shoot up drugs. Mayor Bill de Blasio, New York City, is wants to bring safe injection sites to New York City, guaranteeing that people are still going to do illegal drugs. The Deputy Consul General of Israel apparently, according to him, kicked out of an Uber for speaking Hebrew on the phone. The Uber driver didn't like, didn't understand what Hebrew was. Thought he was talking in some other weird language. Pentagon has confirmed that the Chinese have fired lasers near a military base in East Africa against U.S. military aircraft, injuring some of those pilots. And if you have Twitter... If you have Twitter, you've been asked to change your password because they found a bug at Twitter that stored passwords, and that bug was unmasked. My name's Nate Shellman. The country is not going to hell in a handbasket. We're talking about it when we come back on The Dana Show. Call The Dana Show now at 844-344-DANA. Nate Shellman here, filling in for Dana Lash here on The Dana Show. She will be back on Monday. She's at the NRA convention. President Trump gave her a shout out. Lash, by the way, Mr. President. I know it's coming. Country is at 3.9% unemployment. And it's the the one thing people don't want to talk about. No, 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 we can't talk. No, that's good news. We can't talk about good news. We got to talk about all the negative news, like Giuliani and Trump not being on the same page, like uh, like ooh, like Sarah Huckabee Sanders shutting down April Ryan. Oh man, we have some of that audio. April Ryan getting shut down by Sarah Huckabee Sanders. If you have that, Stephen, if Please. you have that queued up, is it? 
Yeah. So. Let's let's uh, let, let's hear a little bit of that. Why didn't he talk to the Why didn't he talk to the White House press office about his impacting stellar statements about what was happening? Uh, the White stage. House press office wouldn't coordinate with the president's outside legal team on legal well, strategy. Blindside. You said yourself well, you were blindsided. Well, I actually didn't use that term. Well, I said it, but you were blindsided from <laughs> what you said. Well, for uh, with all due respect, you actually don't know much about me in terms of what I feel and what I don't. I don't. Years to uh, understand how this operates. All right, I think we're good. Go Lolly, go ahead. Ha! Ha ha! I love Sarah Sanders. I think she's cool. I think she's got to put up with a lot of stuff. I don't know if she's a hard drinker, but I could I wouldn't blame her if she was. So everybody just wants to harp on this. Everybody, all the press they just want to harp on this. Why didn't you tell? Why didn't you tell? Do you guys know? Do you guys talk? You guys do this? Yeah. 3.9% unemployment. Labor Department doesn't care about Trump's approval rating. Labor Department, this is how many people are looking for work. This is how many people can work. This is how many people can't. So of the able-bodied workers, um, wow, only 3.9%. On, let's double-check that. It was 4.1 last month. Now, now it's 3.9, so it's not a statistical anomaly. That's good. And people can't stand it. Which makes me love that because it's real. This is real. 844-344-DANA. 844-344-3262. You tell me. I'm here at a radio studio. I mean, I'm doing great, but neither neither Bush, nor Obama, nor Trump hired me. But you tell me. I'm hearing from a lot of people who are in service industries, who are in building industries, and more they have more customers, which means more people have more money to go build things, do things, go out to eat. Tell the American people that everything's bad when they have money in their pocket and a job. Tell them, tell them it's tell them it's awful. 844-344 Dana. Tell me it's bad. Who do you give credit to? Do you give credit to President Trump? And if you don't, then tell me who. Tell me who you give credit to. Let's go to let's go to Ken. Ken, you're on the Dana Show. Go ahead, Ken. Was that me? That uh, if with... your name's Ken, then it's you. Oh, well, it's not Ken. It's T I M. Tim. Ah. Uh. Well, you know what? You're on the air now, anyway. So, Tim, my apologies. We're going to have to beat somebody and uh, master control, but that's okay. Tim, congratulations. You're taking Ken's spot. Go ahead, Tim. Okay, this is a great show. You're ending your week on a bang. I appreciate all your work, and Dana will appreciate all that, too. Okay, something I haven't heard anyone touch on that affects employment and If President Trump is successful with his battle on the drug immigration, and I think you'll agree with the things I say, employers are affected by, you know, the drug results. People are unemployable. Employment, unemployment can... I mean, employability can increase if people stop using the drugs. And uh, President Trump has announced his war with the drug gangs, drug cartels. And uh, he's not the only president. It's been going on for decades. But uh, you agree with me that unemployment can increase if, if people... Stop using the illegal drugs. I I would agree that if people stop doing illegal drugs, uh, employment would increase. I would agree with that statement, I Tim. Can't... I appreciate the call. Let's get uh, let's get Mark. Mark, you're on the Dana Show. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, sorry. Let's go to Peggy in Indiana. Peggy, you're on the Dana Show. Go ahead, Peggy. Yes. Hello. I'm calling about hello, President Peggy. Trump, and I'm hello. I'm really happy with what President Trump's doing. Now, see, Peggy, 
Peggy, hold on. The yeah. thing is, I can hear you, but I want you to be careful because if you're happy with the way things go on, you know, people still actually feel that way today. I was at a, um, I was at a coffee shop this morning, and Peggy, I don't know about your area, but you know, there there are there are liberal Democrat enclaves in in a lot of cities, and 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 Boise's no different. Uh, while the entire state seems to be red, there's this little enclave of. You know, even in polite discussion, people don't want to say, wow, the country's really doing great. Maybe Trump knows what he's doing. People are so scared to say that still, still. They don't want to be sneered at or looked at or frowned upon. I didn't say the guy was Jesus. I just said, I just said the country's not doing bad. That's all. What, Peggy? I, How hard? I agree. Yeah. I've never been a follower. I've liked Trump from day one because he says what he means and he means what he says. Yeah. I don't care who he he speaks with. Yeah. I think for now it's I don't. I, by the way, I don't know if he's sleeping with Melania or by himself. I, I I don't know. I don't know what it's like in his house lately. But you know what? Even then, none of my business. I mean, we're 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 There's talking about a hooker I from. Uh, or, with. That's yeah, right. That, yeah, I, I I still uh, I I'd uh, I'd love him to lower the price of gas. That'd be great. That'd, that'd be fabulous. Be I think we can all. Like, about what they say, who he sleeps with. They, they might find out who their husbands are sleeping with. <laughs> Peggy, here's right? the thing: if if if, if there was a hundred percent, a hundred percent employment, uh, and it was he was cheating on his wife. Uh, wow, that that really sucks. Um, but there's a hundred percent employment. I mean, we're That's we're right. at three point nine percent unemployment. So we're at ninety six. I know it doesn't actually. We're at sixty uh, sixty eight percent employed because there's a segment of society that is not employable for a certain right. for for one criteria or another. So all those who well, can work, three point nine percent are unemployed. I think it's wonderful. Here's another thing. I think that President Trump should tell the Democrats that oxygen is bad for them and let's see them suffocate themselves to prove him wrong. <laughs> I like the spice, Peggy. I appreciate the I appreciate the call. Eight four four three four four Dana. Eight four four three four four thirty two sixty two. Alan, you're on the Dana Show. Go ahead, Alan. Hey man, how you doing today? We, Go for it. I just want to say I'm really I'm really happy that uh that things are going the way they are, and I give all the credit in the world to President Trump. I'm a small business owner um, here in rural. Franklin County, Indiana, and things are going pretty good for us, man. And if you uh, you go in any big box store around the city um, in the mornings, you're going to find guys. Those places are packed, man. Guys are in buying materials, they're doing jobs, they're getting jobs. People are spending money. I'm I'm taking phone calls. I'm giving quotes. I'm winning bids. Um, things are shaping up for us, man. And uh, I give all the credit to President Trump. Okay, so let, let me talk about you for just a second. You're a small. Uh, what do you do? Uh, just a small contractor, man. We, you know, we do it all. We we build stuff. We fix stuff. We put lipstick on pigs if we need to. <laughs> uh, well, okay. I'm actually interested in a quote for that, but. See the thing is, is, is I've I've maintained this for a while today that more people have more th- have more money to spend, and there's enough work to go around. You remember a time where if you bid on a contract and you didn't get the bid, you were SOL. Now if you don't get the bid today, well there's there's other work around. You're you're gonna get one of three or four bids, right? That's right, man. And there's tons of it out there, man. I mean, my phone doesn't quit ringing for work honestly and we're you know doing our very best to try to make many customers happy as we can i mean you know we don't win them all but it's not like we're starving all right alan you give all the president uh all the credit to uh to yeah you give all the credit to president trump and i can appreciate that i appreciate the call i when i come back i'll tell you why you shouldn't give all the credit some of the credit goes to president trump don't give all the credit to president trump my name's nate shellman I'm filling in for Dana here on the Dana Show. She'll be back Monday. All right, eight four four three four four Dana. The one thing barely anyone's talking about today: three point nine percent unemployment. 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. I thought, thought the country was supposed to be failing. The country's supposed to be bad. Think bad things are happening. You can't, you can't say good news. It's that stupid. If you say good news, people think he's succeeding. When I come back, take more calls. Who do you give credit to? Do you give credit to President Trump or not? A lot of you giving all the credit. I'll tell you why you shouldn't give all the credit to President Trump next on The Dana Show. Miss anything from the show? Check out the full podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you listen. Nate Shellman here in Boise, Idaho, filling in for Dana here on The Dana Show. She'll be back Monday after enjoying the NRA convention, getting a shout out from President Trump, who's enjoying 3.9% unemployment, 164,000 jobs added in April. And you know what? He should get a lot of the credit, some, a lot, but he shouldn't get it all. A lot of that is on us. And I know it's going to sound like a, like a, just some sappy feel good message. Oh, doesn't that sound? Yes, it's the American people. Yeah, it's the American people who for the better part of a decade, the better part of a decade, the American people were told they could barely do anything without government providing American people were told for a long they couldn't do anything without government going first government leading the way government telling them what to do where to go how to do it and it would have been very easy for so many facets of American society to say okay we will obey no we knew better we knew better We don't need the government for everything. Go kill the bad guy. Go kill the bad guy, fix the roads. But we don't need the government for everything. It would have been so incredibly simple after being pounded and hounded for years, year after year, to just say, oh, you know what? Government will provide. It's amazing what people will do when they realize, um, Government might help you out a little bit, but government ain't going to do everything. 844-344-DANA. Let me get Bean. You're on the Dana Show. Go ahead, Bean. Hey, I'm from central Indiana. Drive a truck, and almost every warehouse I go by or go in has got help wanted signs out. And I think our uh, unemployment rate is lower than 3.9 in Indiana. That'd be great well, if it I is. People that aren't, yeah, and I think the people that aren't working just don't want to work. There's our unemployment right there. And the company I work for, we've got over eight thousand employees, and we are next month about to get a one thousand dollar bonus, tax incentive bonus. Uh, by the way, Bian, you are correct. Uh, it is. It's lower than three. It's three point four percent unemployment in Indiana. Right. So it is lower than three point yeah. nine. We're booming here, and then people could be working if they wanted to because, they're, like I said, everybody's needing help. We're needing drivers and all that. And uh, I got one other thing on the Stormy Daniels deal. Get tired of hearing about it, but did anybody ever check for the year that she got that $130,000 so she said she got? Did she turn that in on her taxes? Would that be like the income <laughs> provided? Should, does she get audited for that? <laughs> yeah. You don't want to, by the way, you, you want to see an accountant run, have so have whoever's in charge at the IRS reach out to the floor and say, Hey, we're going to edit, we're going to audit Stormy Daniels and you will see grown nerds, pocket protectors, calculators. Is, is it okay? But Steven, is it okay if I say nerds? Am I allowed to say nerds or am I going to get in trouble again? No, you're okay. I don't want to get in trouble. I'm, oh, I'm okay with nerds. We're all nerds. You're right. We're all nerds. But you will, I mean, you will see accounting nerds just about gnaw their arm off if they're on the phone to get in line to audit Stormy Daniels. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> Bean, I appreciate the call. Let me squeeze, let me get, let me get Rose in as well. Rose, you're on the Dana Show. Go ahead, Rose. I think that we got a good president. I think he's got more guts than any of them that we've had in the last six, seven years, well, longer than that because Obama wasn't squat. 
I think he's a good okay. president. And I think you know, it, I am right there with that dude. I do. I am so sick of the Stormy Daniels. I think that is exactly what somebody needs to do is audit her. <laughs> but uh, did he ever, I mean, has he really ever admitted that, yes, he did? Or because they said no, that she. No, no. No, no, listen, 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 Rose, 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 you're going down the rabbit hole. Rose, you're going down the rabbit hole. Just watch the story. Don't go, don't go full down the rabbit hole. You're like these people that watch, yeah, honestly, you're like these people that watch Walking Dead and think it could actually happen. Just, 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 just watch, just watch the show. Just watch the show. It doesn't define the whole network. Just watch the darn show. And that's it. And understand it doesn't characterize the entire country. Okay? Okay? Oh, Thank yeah. You, I know. And I also agree Thank with you. Peggy. I think that the Democrats do need to hold their breath. Rose, appreciate the call. You know what? I think now's as good a time as any to combine Florida Man and this day in stupidity into one thing. Let's go ahead. Pinellas County, Florida. A Florida man, 37 years old, tried to fit in with everybody else at the Hancock Bank, wearing long pants, long sleeve shirt, gloves, glasses, fake beard, and, of course, the pantyhose over his head. If that didn't uh, make him stand out, well, he was carrying a handgun, jumped over the counter, ordered people to the ground, demanded money. He was given cash. Then he fled northbound in a 98 Toyota Camry, which is not a great fleeing car on U.S. Highway 19. Police gave chase die packs exploding and as he was driving on the road what do you think he started chucking out the window the money he had just stolen and that is today's this day in stupidity as always it is a pleasure and an honor steven thank you very much enjoy your baseball game the rest of you enjoy your weekend dana will be back on monday Hosting her show aptly named The Dana Show.